What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. All right, today's video, we're gonna be doing a review on a new inverter from Orient Power. A full review basically means we're going to obviously take a closer look. We're gonna open it up to take a look at the inside and then we're gonna to attempt to try basically every single feature or option that the inverter has. So having said that, the video is probably gonna be really long and that's pretty much because I can't fit all of that in a little five to 10 minute video. So I'm gonna have chapters down in the timeline so you can skip around if you want to. All right. Let's get to it. It's basically a 120 volt pure sine wave all-in-one solar off-grid inverter. Off-grid means it doesn't do any grid tie or net metering or anything like that. However, you can plug it into the grid for grid assist or grid charging. So obviously it does have a charger and that is 120 amps. Or I guess if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you could plug it into a generator because this does have the generator dry contacts. Another thing that I'm not too familiar with is battery-less operation. Basically, you can run this off of solar and it runs just fine. I'm not sure what you would need that for, but apparently you can do that with this inverter. Speaking of solar, this has two 250 volt 60 amp chargers for a total of 120 amps or 8,000 watts. It does support paralleling up to six, so you could do single phase, split phase, or three phase. It's got communication ports, so you can hook up your smart batteries, and it even has built-in Wi-Fi, so you can connect it to your home network system, download the app, and put it on your phone, Android, or iOS, and keep an eye on things from pretty much anywhere. These are also UL1741 certified, so if you're in the United States and you want to get inspected, you should be good to go. And the price on these is actually pretty cheap. It's only $1,080. That's actually a little bit cheaper than MPP Solar, for their LV6548 and I'm pretty sure Signature Solar has one real similar to this. I think it's the, the EG4 6500EX, only that one is a 500 volt charger and this one is a 250 volt charger. So this one is a little bit cheaper and pretty much the same thing. All right, enough of this, let's take a closer look. All right, so right here on the front says Orient Power. We have a black stripey guy right here. Right underneath that, we have a long LED that is RGB. Zooming in on the little menu screen right here, this is actually removable. So you can put this pretty much anywhere you wanna go. Anyway, I'd imagine there's gonna be a whole bunch of information that shows up on the screen after we power it on, which we'll do again later on. Anyway, we've got three function buttons right over here and three function buttons right over here. Also, there's little LEDs by each of the function buttons. We have a power button, and then we have a couple little pictures right here with which kind of point to the bottom side here. This is your Wi-Fi module. We have dry contacts, USB port, your battery BMS communication port if you're using lithium batteries, and then your PC port. On the bottom, if you wanna remove this screen and remote mount it, basically you just pull out this screw and this little holder tab, and this will come right out. And once you do that, you'll disconnect it from the cable in there. It's like an ethernet cable, and you'll connect that right here. Anyway, we have your two PV ports right here, PV1, PV2. This is a removable sticker and this one is as well. These stickers are just covering up the holes for the gland nuts that came with it. And then underneath here is the current sharing port and the parallel communication port. And that allows you to parallel other inverters together with the supplied cables. Lengthwise from the top of the mounting bracket, all the way down to the bottom of the MC4 connectors, it's around 23 and a half inches by five and seven eighths. And we're about 16 and a half inches wide. And it also came with all of this other stuff as well. So we got watch power for the computer. I'm pretty sure you can download this online. We have the user manual, some paralleling cables, another cable, which is the communication cable for inverter to battery. We have a little metal box here, which probably goes on the bottom side of the inverter. We may or may not look at that later. Came with four gland nuts, another communication cable, and also came with a set of MC4 connections, like DIY style, where you make them up yourself, and it looks like a spare fuse. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove this screen and we can see how that works. So I'm just gonna pull out this one screw down here. We just slide it down. And here's the little tab that comes off. 
and we just pull that out and you can see we do have an ethernet port right here on the side and we just disconnect that boom there you go so you can pretty much mount this wherever you want you can see right here there's a tab with a hole in it and on the back side there's these other two little holes that you would kind of hang it kind of like a picture all right so there you go you can mount that wherever you want and you just plug it back in with the ethernet cable here and the other port that's right here on the bottom. All right, just doing a quick little look around on the sides. There's not a whole lot. There's just some venting right here. You do have an intake vent right here and it has a removable filter. So pull the screw out and slide it down. And there you go. You got a foam filter that you can clean if it gets pretty dusty. Nothing on the top side. The other side is pretty much the exact same thing with a removable filter that you can take out and clean. And then you also have a sticker with the specifications on it right here. All right, next thing we'll do is pull off this little cover here. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five screws to do that. All right, we do have some connections right here. I'm guessing you could probably leave this connected while you do your AC connections and your battery connections, but I'm going to disconnect it. There's three connections here and they only go in one place, so you can't really mess it up. All right, there you go. All right, I guess we will start from left to right. So right over here is where your solar or PV goes in. Wires come in, go down to a circuit board down here, but then they come back up and go through this ferrite core ring. And then it goes down here to connect to the board again. And then it goes into the inverter. Wire size that I can see is 12 AWG. Right next to that, we have your AC input and output. First one is AC input. AC output. You got your line neutral ground, line neutral ground. And right here we have a 250 volt input breaker. All right, so here's your AC input breaker. And right here in the center, down here on the bottom, and that's your communication circuit board for your paralleling the inverters together. I don't really know much about that, but there you go. And then to the right is where we connect the battery positive and negative. And it looks like there's an open wire connection here, but maybe it doesn't actually go to anything. I want to say I read in the manual that there's an option for 12 volt DC output. Maybe that's for that. I don't know, so don't hold me to that. The nuts on here, they kind of look serrated, so that's good. Oh, and of course there's three different fans. You got two right there and then one right over here. These are 12 volts and 0.9 amps. So I guess we'll find out here a little bit later if those are loud or if those are quiet. All right, I guess what we could do now is pop the top and see what's on the inside. And I guess there's supposed to be a replaceable fuse in here somewhere. To take off the top, there's three screws right here, two screws on each side, and then two screws on the top. And of course, be careful pulling this off because you got these wires right here. And I would imagine there's going to be a wire for this RGB LED right here. All right, so pulling off the cover, it's actually underneath this lip right here. So it kind of looks like we need to pull from the top side or maybe we can just slide it up. There we go. All right, so remember, be careful a little bit. Kind of hard to see this cable right here goes to that LED bar in the front. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. And then I'm gonna slide these cables through here and there we go. All right, nothing much else to see underneath here. Well, there you go. We're going to start over here where the solar comes in, you know, right behind the fan. You have this little plastic here for ducting to force the air to go, you know, where it needs to go. Wires connect down there on a circuit board. I would imagine this is the charge controller. All right. Yeah, I can't really see down there. It's a little compact. But anyway, comes out over here on this side. Looks like we go through another ferrite core or ring, and then we go over to the inverter side. Back up here, we'll go to the AC input and output. Wires go into the ferrite rings, goes underneath this circuit board, and then underneath there, it looks like there's a couple of relays. I'm guessing those are the relays that switch you back and forth from grid to off-grid, etc. cetera. Uh, we go through some other components down there another inductor or whatever that thing is and then we go over to 
the inverter board. All right, got the plastic thing out of the way. I just had to remove those two little plastic spiky guys right there. So I'm guessing this is the inverter board. Again, I don't know what half of this stuff is. All I know is that these two guys are transformers and it's got a whole bunch of really big capacitors in here. Kind of hard to see, but it looks like there's uh, some MOSFETs or whatever down there underneath the heat sink and possibly some temperature sensors if we go up to this side, we have some more really big capacitors, and then we have that fuse that I was talking about. That's a 200 amp fuse. All right, so if you accidentally mess something up and you can't get your inverter to work, I would check that fuse right there. All right, I don't really know what else I could show you in here, but there you go. I mean, everything looks fine to me. All right, I'm going to put this thing back together, and we will hook it up to a battery and test it out. All right, we're gonna be connecting to the Orient Power 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I just did a review on this battery. It's pretty awesome. If you guys haven't seen the review, uh, I'll link it below so you guys can check it out. All right, so for this battery, since we have a circuit breaker right here, we don't need a pre-charge resistor. If you're not using a battery that has a circuit breaker, then you're gonna to wanna to use a pre-charge resistor like this before you make your final battery connection because what ends up happening is whenever you make your final connection, there's usually a really big spark right here. And what you end up doing is ruining the threads or the connection right here. So make sure you use a pre-charge resistor or use a circuit breaker. One of the other things we're gonna hook up is the Victron Smart Shunt and then also the laptop to this whole setup. Basically so we can check the no load idle current and of course the load while it's running. The laptop's gonna hook up to this cause that's gonna hook up right up to the BMS. If you don't have a smart battery like this that has BMS communications, et cetera, you know, you can use something like this. And that's just a reference for you guys to see both options. All right, so let's hook it up real quick and test it out. If I haven't said it before, these are 13 millimeter. And before we get started real quick, I was gonna check the neutral to ground bond on these and we'll do the sound so you can hear it. So for the AC input, if we go to neutral and ground, there's no bond. If we go to the output to neutral, and ground, there is a bond, okay? So just keep that in mind. And we're gonna be connecting a sub panel that I just wired up for this video. Sub panel means that the ground and neutral are separated inside this box. All right, and then for the input, I just made this little tiny extension cord. It's got some 12 gauge wire on it. And the only thing that that's going to limit me is full sending from the grid to recharge the battery. That's okay, we'll just lower that part inside the menu. All right, so one thing that I've seen online with different inverters similar to this is these terminals in here are brass. So you definitely don't want to be a gorilla when you're tightening these down. All right, first connection we're gonna do is the ground because that's what it always says to do. So we'll go ground, neutral, then line. I think the torque on these is only like 10 inch pounds or something. Just keep that in mind when you're putting this together, if you get one of these. And the reason we're using this sub panel here and not just a couple of outlets is because I wanted to run three separate 12 gauge lines so I could have three separate 20 amp outlets because this is 6,500 watts. Can't do that out of one or two outlets on the same line. All right, now I'm gonna do a quick little check here for my ground and neutral over here. It should be all connected. There we go. Yes, this is super ghetto -y old. And then we can temporarily place our cover back on here so we don't accidentally touch anything. All right, so for this first power on, I turned most of the lights off, so whenever we power it on, we can just see this RGB LED right up here turn on. All right, so let me go ahead and turn on the battery real quick. All right, so there you go. You can see it's actually cycling through all the colors here. We got a beep. All right, I think we are on now. So on the Victron Smart Shunt, it's drawing 1.24 amps or 66 watts. All right, that's if you have an external shunt 
hooked up. All right, so over here on the laptop, this is coming directly off the battery right over here. It's showing 1.3 amps, all right? So pretty close to the boom shunt or the Victron shunt, but just a little bit more. All right, so on the screen here, uh, input, we're showing zero volts, but we're not plugged into the grid right now. Output is 120 volts, which is exactly what it should be. Right over there, we got a little load meter, and we have a battery meter right down here. And it looks like we have three other little symbols right here, which I would have to look in the manual to see exactly what those are. But it looks like a battery, a DC to AC, and then the output. All right, so we'll just scroll through some of these options to see what it shows you on the home screen. So I'm going to go down. All right, so the only thing it changed there was the hertz. Of course, we don't have any because we're not connected right now. This is PV1 voltage if we were connected to PV1 amps and watts. Same for PV2 would be volts, amps, watts. Battery amps, same for watts. All right, battery voltage is 53.1. And then down here, the output hertz changed to 60. Output percentage, output VA, output watts. And again, battery amps. Oh, you got to set up the day, the year. Huh, interesting. All right, so you do have to set up the date and all that kind of stuff in here. All right, enough of this. Let's test it out. And we're gonna be plugging in a variety of different things here. So one of them is gonna be a Dyson vacuum cleaner. I have no idea how much that one draws. Next one is gonna be a smaller air compressor, 14 amps and two horsepower or 2.5 horsepower peak. Next one is a 10 inch sliding compound miter saw. And this one is 15 amps. And the other two are gonna be these 1500 watt heaters right here. And we might as well throw in a 150 watt light bulb. All right, let's get to it. All right, so I turned off most of these lights over here because I have a little tiny screen or a little tiny camera right up here pointing down at the inverter screen and at the boom shunt, the Victron shunt. Anyway, we're gonna start plugging in the variety of things. And the first thing that we'll start off with is the 150 watt light bulb. I know it's huge, right? Let's do it. Right now we're only drawing 1.1 amps or 60 watts. Here we go. I know, huge. All right, obviously it handled that no problem. We're drawing 200 watts, 3.8. Amps. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in these two. We're going to do one at a time. Just know whenever I plug in heater number one, it's going to be this. And then heater number two, it'll be this. We will start with heater number one. Heater number one on low. Obviously, it's doing that no problem at all. We're drawing 1,000 watts or 18, 19 amps. If you wanna see on the little screen here, all right, so on here it is 19 amps, 913 watts. So we could do, all right, we'll do a quick efficiency test at least at this number. So we're gonna do 908 divided by 998. At this wattage, if it'll focus, we're running at 90%. All right, we'll do that test here again in just a minute. All right, I'm gonna plug in heater number two on low before we start, 1,000 watts basically. All right, heater number two on low. Uh, obviously it does that no problem whatsoever. So we're drawing 2,300 watts or 44 amps. That's a 33% load on the inverter, 2.14 kilowatt. All right, so we'll do that same thing. 2.12 divided by 2.30. For that right there, we're running at 92% efficiency. All right, and if I'm doing that wrong, obviously let me know down in the comments section, but we're doing, we're actually doing really good. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heaters on high. We'll start with heater number one. That brings us up to 3,100 watts, 60 amps, 2.86 kilowatt from the inverter. All right, it's doing that no problem. And the fans just maybe turned up a little bit, not too bad. All right, I'm gonna turn on heater number two on high. See if that does anything. 
I did hear the fan kick up a little bit. Honestly, the fan on this is really quiet. The fans on the heater are much louder. Anyway, we're running 3,300 watts and 3.06. All right, so we'll do that conversion again. So right now it is running at 91% efficiency. And that's just probably because the numbers are jumping around a little bit. So I would say that's not too bad actually at all. All right, so what I'm gonna do real quick I'm going to take the microphone from me and I'm just going to hold it around three, four inches away. Honestly, that's pretty damn quiet. You probably actually hear the heaters more than you hear the inverter. So I'm going to turn the heat, the heaters back off. Heaters back off. All right, next we're going to try a vacuum cleaner because those have a pretty big surge of current plug that guy in there so we're back down to 60 watts or 1.14 amps all right vacuum cleaner here we go camera's sliding down my bad sorry about that it does the vacuum cleaner no problem so we'll turn on a light bulb plus vacuum cleaner No problem at all. Let me turn on heater number one on low. All right, 850 watts plus vacuum cleaner. Does that, no problem. All right, let me go uh, on high. All right, we kind of leveled off at 1600 watts, 30 amps. Here's the vacuum cleaner. Nice, it does that, no problem. All right, heater number one is back on low. Heater number two is on. All right, so two heaters on low, pulling 2100 watts, 41 amps. Here comes the vacuum cleaner. Nice. All right, does that, no problem. All right, heater number one is on high, drawing 2900 watts or 57 amps. And here goes the vacuum cleaner. Nice, 4,000 watts. All right, we're gonna go to the number two heater on high. I don't know, I don't know if it'll do this. All right, so we're at 3,100 watts, almost 3,200 watts. Here we go, vacuum cleaner. All right, so that was too much. All right, vacuum cleaner and two heaters was too much. We just basically hit the overload on the battery. So I think the inverter actually would do it. All right, let me reset the uh, battery here. All right, so what we cannot do is run two 1500 watt heaters on high plus starting the vacuum cleaner because we're overloading the battery too much. I think the inverter would do it just fine, actually. All right, so what can we do next? Uh, we could try an air compressor. Let me grab that real quick. Here we go. No problem. All right, let me turn on heater number one on low, drawing 850 watts. Here we go. No problem, we turn heater number one on high, 1,620 watts. No problem, saw it go up to 3,000 watts. Heater number two on. All right, so both heaters are on low. Try the air compressor. Heater number one is on high. I think we're gonna probably tap out the battery again. Both heaters are on high. I'm drawing 3,000 watts. I bet we're gonna shut it off. No. Nice. And a heater or a light bulb? All right, I thought we were for sure gonna shut it down. All right, well that was actually a pretty good test. I thought for sure we were gonna trip the battery again. All right, so next we're gonna do the saw right over here. I'll bring the camera over for that. All right, 10 inch saw all by itself. We're gonna try the vacuum cleaner and the saw. 
because I need to cut a piece of wood, actually. All right, vacuum cleaner first. Let me just test the saw. All right, that does work. Oh, I tripped it that time. All right, let me reset it. All right, the only thing I did now is unplug the vacuum cleaner from the inverter and have that plugged into the wall, but I still need to cut a couple pieces of this wood. So here we go. Mmm, cedar. Smells good. All right, I probably shouldn't have done that inside the house, but it does smell really good. All right, anyway, it does handle the saw just fine, and it actually handled the vacuum cleaner and the saw the first time. However, the second time, the battery over current protection shut us off again. So either way, it doesn't mind starting saws. I don't really know what else I could throw at it right now. I think what I'll probably have to do is at least get another battery in parallel so we can draw more from this inverter, which I don't know if I'll have time for that in this video, but that's okay. We can maybe do that in another video. One other thing I just figured out real quick is I managed to turn off the beep whenever I push a button and all that kind of stuff. And that's option number 18. All right, anyway, we're gonna plug it into the grid and look at the screen and see what changes and all that kind of stuff. All right, so here we go. So right now we're obviously off grid because I have the plug right here. If you look on the screen right here, we're showing a battery and then the inverter out to the output all right so we should see some other stuff show up on the screen all right so plugging into the grid right now all right so you can see the grid shows up right over here we're going to go into the menu real quick and to do that you just long press the enter button all right so we're going to go to option one we're on solar battery and utility right now we're going to change that to utility all right so press enter we back out and that should connect over here somewhere. All right, there you go. Now we're in bypass mode. All right, so that does work. And if you're curious if this will still power your loads after the grid goes away, we're gonna pull the grid right now. All right, there you go. The grid went away and we're still on and powering the loads. All right, I'm gonna plug the grid back in there's the grid it's sinking and it'll go into bypass all right all that works pretty darn good all right the next thing we're going to do is connect the inverter to the bms so they communicate and i'm a huge idiot when it comes to stuff like that first time i did it i just grabbed a regular ethernet cable and i could not get it to communicate you actually have to use the one that comes with the inverter and this one actually was labeled inverter Probably can't see it very well, that's okay. You have to use this one because the wires inside go to different pinouts. So that's all I was doing wrong. So let me show you. All right, sorry for this poor screen sharing, but right over there, you need to change your battery to pylon 485 if it's not on there, okay? That's all you gotta do. You gotta go to the drop down menu, select your battery. All right, your protocol, and that's it. You just click on it and it'll automatically save. All right, and then we're gonna take our cable and plug it into the little screen right here. And that's right on the BMS communication port right there. Take the other end of the cable and plug that right into the battery. And then over on the little screen over here, you're gonna long press the enter button to get into the settings and you're gonna scroll up to option five. Right now it's set on AGM, you're gonna press enter, and you're gonna scroll down or scroll up to the PYL setting, all right? You press enter and it's done. That's pretty much it. What that allows you to do now is control everything based off of percentages and not voltages. For example, option 12, if you're off grid and you're using grid as a backup, if you want it to switch back to grid, at a certain percentage, you would set that there. That's like a dead battery. 
And then if you go to 13, it's if you're on grid and you reach 75% state of charge, it'll switch you back off grid, all right? And then you can go to option 29. This is basically a dead, dead battery. If you want everything to shut off at whatever percent, you would set that here and I have it set at 10%. All right, next thing I'm gonna do real quick is disconnect some of my solar over there and run some wires way over here. Hook it up to the inverter so we can make sure that works. The time now is, it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm not going to have a whole lot of sun or anything like that. It's fall time right now. I don't get much sun right now anyway. It's usually cloudy. Hopefully we have a little bit of sun, but I'm, let me get that strung over here and we'll hook it up to the inverter and make sure that works. I'm just going to check voltage here real quick. 208 volts. I'm going to plug these in down here on the bottom. All right. Now, if we look on the screen here, we can see some solar panels did show up. Oh, and we are hopefully charging and we might see that right over here. Yep, we are charging, look at that. I didn't even have to do anything. We're charging at a whole 1.3 amps right now, 62 watts. All right, so let me go through the numbers here. All right, so we're on PV1, we're at 182 volts. And right here it says we have 0.6 of an amp and that's at 180 volts, all right? So 114 watts. Oh, we jumped up a little bit. All right, so that does work. Works out great, actually. All right, we're gonna mix it up here real quick. We're gonna change some of the settings. We're gonna put the inverter back on grid so we can do solar and utility charging to make sure that works. We're on solar battery and utility. We're gonna change that to utility, which would be USB, utility, solar, battery. All right, so we're in bypass. Option 16, right now it's on solar only charging and we're gonna change that to solar and utility. So now we should get solar and utility charging. All right, we'll see what that does on here. All right, so right now, as you can see on the screen, we're in bypass mode, which is we're on grid, and we're also using the grid to charge the battery, and we're also using solar to charge the battery. All right, so I'm gonna pull the grid from it, and we'll see what happens. Should just go to solar charging only. Yep, there it goes. So everything seems to be working as it should. Gonna plug it back into the grid. And by grid, I mean my off-grid system. <laughs> All right, we should go back into bypass mode here in a second, which we did. And we're charging from grid and solar. All right, so now that we have it on solar and utility charging, let me take away solar. And actually, I think both will go away. So give me one second. I'm gonna shut off the circuit breakers over here. Oh, no, it did. Oh yeah, because we're on grid. Okay, my bad, I was thinking the other way. All right, so there you go, solar went away and we're still charging from utility. That's just because we're still on grid. I'm gonna change this to off grid. That's the only thing I haven't figured out yet is whenever you change it to off grid, it doesn't always switch right over. But that's okay, I'm gonna go turn the solar back on. All right, so we're charging from solar and utility. I'm actually gonna take the utility charge away because that's pulling from my own system, solar and utility. So we could go only solar charging. All right, now you can see that the grid charging went away and that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna pull the grid from it. All right, grid's gone. And remember, we're also running the inverter and the inverter takes, what, 66 watts? So let me plug this back into the grid. Boom, there you go. I think I'm gonna call it for the end of the video because it's gone on long enough. All right, so there's a few things that I didn't get to test and I wrote them down here. Did not get to do the full send of 6,500 watts. Uh, I'm gonna have to parallel in another battery to do that. So if somebody really wants to see that, make sure you put it down in the comment section and I can make another video. The app that goes on your phone, I completely forgot about that. So if somebody really wants to see that, you know, I'll throw that in the next video too, but you have to put that down in the comment section. Battery list, I forgot to do that option. <sighs> Honestly, it's, it's like November 20th right now. We just don't have enough sun right now to make it worth it. If somebody really wants to see that, you know, put that down in the comment section and we just have to pray for some sun. But that could be, could be cool. I mean, I don't really know why you would need that option unless you're at a construction site with solar and you don't have a battery, you know, maybe you could charge your tool batteries or I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know why you would need that option. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section. The other thing I didn't get to test, which I think would be really cool, is the option where you put the date and the time and all that stuff in here, where you have it go off grid during the daytime and then switch back on grid at nighttime. You know, for those people that get charged more for electricity during the daytime or whatever time you get charged more. Uh, this could be, this could be really cool for that. Again, we would need some sun to do that. Obviously I didn't get to parallel in a second inverter because I don't have a second inverter. I think that would be really cool to do. I think it would be really awesome actually to test that out on my house, do the split phase option and see what all we can run. I'd really like to find out if we could run, you know, air conditioning, stove and dryer and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if we'd be able to do it with just the two. You might have to have four, but I honestly don't know. It would be really cool to test that out, but I don't have another inverter. And then obviously the last one I didn't get to try was the computer software, the watch power or whatever it was called. Uh, maybe if I have some time, you know, I'll download that and throw it on a computer and check it out. All right, next is the pros and cons, and we'll go over the pros first. All right, first thing, it has a ton of options. It's super cheap slash inexpensive. You get two 60 amp, 250 volt solar charge controllers or MPPT chargers built right in. Honestly, if they had something like this whenever I bought my 12,000 watt grow watt split phase inverter, I might have actually went with something like this. Uh, one of the things I can see right now is I'm doing a DIY build. I've only got two charge controllers on my inverter. And if I get two of these inverters, I technically get four charge controllers. So you can attach more solar without getting extra charge controllers, which I'm gonna have to do over there. You can parallel these, so that's a great option. You can't parallel the one I'm using over there. You can parallel up to six. If you're doing 240 volt split phase, obviously you'll do three and three. It comes with the UL1741 certification. It's not a UL listing, it's a UL certification. So you should be good to go. If you need to get it inspected, everything should be, you should be good to go. From what I understand, you don't need to be UL listed, you just need to be UL certified to pass all that stuff. Obviously, California, I can't say what happens there, so check with your local inspectors and code enforcers. Next one is this is extremely quiet compared to my grow watt. My grow watt is super loud. This one, honestly, the fans on the little heaters were way louder. So this is super quiet. It's got the BMS communication so you can go off state of charge and not voltage. And the last one, which I'm a fan of, is the LED that changes colors and all that kind of stuff. I'm just an LED fan. Cons! Honestly, I don't have too many, but just a couple. I wish the little screen on the inverter would also show you state of charge and not only voltage. If it does, I didn't see it. Next one is the terminals for the AC input and output. They're junk. If you're a gorilla, just like I am, and try to tighten every single electrical connection, you know, as tight as you can possibly get, you're gonna destroy these terminals. I mean, the ones on my grow water junk, but they're better than these ones. These ones, if you're a gorilla, you're gonna break them. And you know what? Pretty much every single one of us is a gorilla because we wanna tighten down every single electrical connection, you know, as tight to get it as tight as we can, honestly. Um, and I broke one, actually. I had to do a temp repair. Luckily, I had some stuff that I could repair it so I could at least test the inverter. I did let them know, and they're gonna be sending me a new terminal, basically, so I can replace that. So just know if you do get one of these, you know, even if it's not this specific inverter, just be careful when you're tightening down your connections. You know, there's torque specs in the manual. Try to go by those if you can. And I think that's the only two that I have right now. Obviously, I couldn't test out every single feature or option. Uh, part of those is because I don't have a second one or I need to parallel in another battery. So I could have more gripes later on, uh, maybe in a second video, but we'll see. Honestly, I really like this inverter. I mean, it's cheap, it looks good. It's got that cool little LED light on the front. Yeah, like I said, if I had a couple of these and I could run them in split phase, I'd really like to run my stove, heater, and air conditioning and all that kind of stuff to see how well you know, they hold up while starting saws and air compressors, you know, like people do, you know, like people live. That's how I want to test it. All right, that's pretty much it. This video's going on forever. I'd love to hear your questions, comments, or concerns, or maybe I missed something or test something wrong. 
you can call me out in the comment section. If anybody's interested in this inverter or maybe you want to check it out, check the specs out, check the manual out, anything like that, I'll have affiliate links down below. Don't forget to like that smash button, subscribe for more solar and battery videos, and I will see you on the um, um, uh, um, 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 all right, just the saw all by itself. Here we go. Oh, I got to plug it in. Ha <laughs> All right, next thing I'm going to do is disconnect some of my solar over there on the water. On the water. Batterly. Batterly. Why do I want to say batterly? Batterly.